I might be the only guy in the known universe that owns a built Turbo Hayabusa and a built Kawasaki H2. Uh, it's pretty silly, I know. In today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at which of these bikes is fastest in the real world by looking at their footage, ripping it up the highway and doing 60 to 160 pulls. Beyond that, we're also gonna see the differences between these two motorcycles. It's not every day you have a turbocharged bike and a supercharged bike right next to each other and you can talk about the differences of what they feel like to ride. Today's video is gonna be a really good one, guys. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. But before we get started, we have a super special giveaway going on for Black Friday and Cyber Monday. Check this out. Guys, the holiday season is upon us and I wanted to do something special for my sweet little squids to show you just how much you mean to me. We got a crazy promotion going on right now at shop.yamanube.co and it starts with this, the Honda Hornet. You may be familiar with this Honda Hornet as it was the original Yami New bike giveaway in 2019. We bought it back from the winter, we restored it and now I'm giving it away again. But only until Cyber Monday. That's right, for the first time ever, we're doing something special for Black Friday and Cyber Monday, but you only have five days to get entered to win this fantastic giveaway. I'm also gonna sweeten the pot and give you guys 10X entries for every dollar you spend over on shop.yamanube.co for your chosen sweepstakes. There's no special promotional code, nothing you gotta do. Simply shop over at shop.yamanube.co and you'll get automatically added for those 10X entries and entered for this giveaway. But it's Cyber Week, folks, and for this bike that started it all, I'm not stopping there. For the first time ever, we're doing second and third place prizes as well. So the first place winner will be getting this Honda Hornet delivered straight to their door, but second place is actually gonna win a trip out here to Austin to ride with us in the hills. Choose whatever Yamanu new bike from the fleet you want, and we'll spend the whole day riding. Third place is gonna win a special limited edition poster signed by yours truly. We're never printing it again, and you're not gonna to wanna to miss it. It's a once in a lifetime Yami Noob event so historic, we are calling it the Cyber Week Giveaway Extravaganza. It's a very short window to get entered to win on this giveaway, so make sure you head over to shop.yaminoob.co and pick out something you like. You'll get 10X entries and automatically entered for this Honda Hornet giveaway. This bike belongs to the people, and I would be remiss to keep it in my stable. It belongs with you guys. If ever there's a giveaway you did not want to miss out on, it is this one. You only have five days to enter to win. Head over to shop.yamanu.co and don't delay. Let's talk about the new kit on the block, my new to me 2015 Kawasaki H2. Famously, this motorcycle features, as many of you know, a 999cc supercharged inline four engine, producing about 240 horsepower from the factory claim from Kawasaki. But this engine's making a whole lot more power. The reason being is it has a built motor. Why does it have a built motor? Well, the previous owner actually melted a piston going 200 miles per hour at a mile event, clicking it up into sixth gear, using the quick shifter, cutting ignition and fuel from what he told me, and he melted a piston. So, new bottom end, new crankshaft, H2R cams, bigger fuel injectors, bigger fuel pump, running E85 gas, stage three supercharger gears, all kinds of goodies that I can't even remember right now. And so that makes you wonder, well, what kind of power is it producing, Yam? Surely a whole lot. Well. We don't know. Uh, the previous owner actually never dynoed this machine. He only ran it at mile events. And so I don't know what kind of power it's making. So we definitely have to get this thing on the dyno and see what kind of power it is producing. Uh, but the closest guess I have is based on a video from Moore Mafia where they dynoed an H2 running MRX02 race gas and stage three supercharger gears and some other stuff done to it. It was producing about 307 at the wheel. Um, I would estimate this motorcycle produces pretty close to that figure given my seat of the pants feel. Uh, I love the More Mafia channel by the way and I feel like I'm one of the few guys in the world with a Turbo Busa and a Built H2 so uh, if y'all want to see a collab between me and More Mafia I think that'd be a ton of fun but let's see how much power the old dog, the Turbo Hayabusa makes in comparison to this H2. And this is my beloved 2007 Turbo Hayabusa. I bought this thing used back in January of 2020. I've almost had it for three years. It was basically stock when I got it. Had a nice titanium exhaust and some really street squid uh, light and underglow setup. Uh, but I enjoyed it for about a year stock and then after a year I decided that it needed to be turboed. So in March of 2021, uh, we took a crack at turboing it, me and Simon and Spite, we all got together and kind of helped build out this thing. And we almost got it right. Um, we took it to the dyno and unfortunately we had leaned it out a little bit. And so on the first dyno pull, it blew a head gasket and we, we blew it up. And so then I took it to a builder who was supposed to help me out with it. 
months went on, this builder dragged his feet and ended up breaking the bike even more, putting the wrong pistons in it. I then took it to the Turbo Hayabusa God here in Texas, Lance Davis, um, who is a drag racer and builder, and uh, he got me set up beautifully with this bike. So this motor, totally built as well. Uh, we've got lots of goodies in here. So it's got lower compression pistons, bigger injectors, Wassner connecting rods. It's featuring the RCC Stage 1 turbo kit, but we've got the boost cranked way up because the compression is lower. Got some bunch of cool little goodies like a flat bottom aluminum oil built pan and a lot of supporting mods as well, too many to list. So it's not an out and out drag bike. That's one thing I want people to know. It's more of like a fun, roll race street bike. I don't really do drag racing stuff. I do track days and actual circuit racing. And this bike is just something fun that I wanted to own. Um, but it is turnkey, it works perfectly. Uh, that's the coolest thing about this Turbo Hayabusa is that it literally starts up and runs every single time. It's retained a lot of its original Hayabusa character, but just kind of cranked up to 11 with the turbo. And full disclosure, I adore this motorcycle. I love telling people about it. I love showing people the bike. And when the opportunity is right, I love showing people the ability to ride this motorcycle as well. So this bike actually has been on the dyno. It does 270 rear wheel horsepower at that tire right there and 160 foot pounds of torque. So the feeling of this thing is just that surging, whooshing turbo power and torque. It's still one of the fastest bikes I have ever ridden in my life. But I've been told by the builder that if we ever wanted more power because of how well we built this engine and everything we put it in and how kind of dialed in it is, all we have to do is put C16 race gas in this, crank up the boost, and I've been told it will reliably do, well, I don't know how reliably, but it should do about 400 wheel horsepower with those two changes. Uh, I will be totally honest, I've had this with this 270 wheel horsepower for almost a year now and I've never felt like it needs more power. Um, it's so stinking fast, uh, it is crazy. But as of right now, it's running pump gas and it's kind of at the limit of uh, until it starts pre-detonating. If you start cranking up the boost more and producing more power, pump gas is just gonna pre-detonate and it's not gonna be a good time. So you need something with a higher octane like C16 or some sort of race gas to actually get this thing to produce the kind of power it could under its kind of fully actualized potential. But the thing is a ton of fun to ride. But let's cover the other differences between these machines because there is a lot. Biggest difference between these two motorcycles is the way they make their power. With the turbo over here on this Hayabusa, and the lower compression pistons and the higher levels of boost, you gotta roll into it, and then all of a sudden around 5,000 RPM, once that turbo really starts kicking in, you fly off into space. Whereas the H2 has this linear, broad power that just seems to build infinitely. It's very, very different. You get that power low down, once the boost spools, it boosts very linearly, and then it just takes off into space. So the power characteristics, very different on these two bikes. One big difference on my Hayabusa is that it is lowered, meaning that it is phenomenally stable at speed. Uh, you can whack this thing in third gear, 80 miles per hour. It just lights it up and goes, never feels like it's gonna lift the front wheel at all. Just feels awesome. Whereas the H2, it's a little twitchy. Uh, it loves to wheelie, it's a rowdy bike. Um, it feels like a, a leader bike that's basically just been absolutely juiced and roided out. Um, it does not feel like a land missile like the Hayabusa. It definitely feels like some demonic incarnation of a leader bike because it kind of is. Electronics on these two bikes. Turbo Hayabusa has nothing, not even ABS. We used to ride like men, you die like men on the Turbo Hayabusa. This is not a bike to be messed with or toyed with, but the H2 has traction control, supposed to have a quick shifter. It's been disabled on this one for safety reasons for the engine per the previous owner, but this bike has levels of control that are gonna keep you safe. It's got wheelie control and some other things that are gonna hopefully keep this thing on planet Earth and rubber side down. But again, it is so rowdy and crazy to ride that I don't really trust it. In terms of handling, it's just a big LOL for me. Uh, neither bike is really that well equipped to handle the twisties. The H2 is definitely more equipped. It feels like a more normal leader bike that you can lean over and have some fun with. The Turbo Hayabusa, given the way it makes its power and the fact that it's lowered, it's just like, if, if you have to get through some twisty roads to get to the highway, more power to you. But this thing belongs in a straight line as a needle through time and space. And honestly, the H2 does too. But I know what you guys are here for. Let's check out the footage of both of these machines and see just how fast they really are. All right, guys, this is the moment you've been waiting for in this video. Let's take a look at some footage of both of these bikes ripping through some gears and see how fast they really are. So first up on the docket, we have the Turbo Hayabusa. 
doing a 90 mile per hour start here. Third gear, wide open, just winding out third gear. Ends at about 145, let's see how it gets along. I mean, so that's pretty prodigious, right? You have 3.583 seconds from 90 to 145 miles per hour on this bike. And to give you guys some context, I thought it would be cool to include this in the video. So this next clip I'm gonna show you guys is actually a 900 horsepower Dodge Hellcat doing 60 to 160. Let's see how that looks. So we can see on there that this you know, 900 horsepower Dodge Hellcat uh, did 60 to 160 in about 10.302 seconds. So this next pull for the Turbo Hayabusa is 90 mile per hour start, third gear wide open, all the way into fourth gear, ending at about 170 miles per hour. Let's see how that looks. So we can see there it's about 5.951 seconds to get from 90 to 170, wide open, third gear, into fourth gear. Um, so it stands to reason that the H2 should be faster, right? Well, let's find out. So we have here the H2 doing a pull, starting at about 80 miles per hour on this one, third gear at 80% throttle. Uh, this was the only time I got the chance to ride this motorcycle. Uh, it's having some issues with the fuel pump and the gas and stuff like that. Um, and I didn't even get it wide open on this pole. So this was third gear, 80% throttle, ending at about 178 miles per hour. So pretty similar to the Turbo Hayabusa. So let's take a look. So ending there at about 9.2 seconds to go from 80 to 178. So faster than the 900 horsepower Dodge Hellcat. Happy about that. Um, but truthfully, this doesn't show the full potential of this machine. Um, as this thing kind of floats the front at 150 miles per hour, I'm not gonna lie, it freaks me out a little bit. It's not stable. It's not feeling like it's gonna really take care of me like the Turbo Hayabusa, which kind of makes you think, oh, I guess the H2 isn't as fast as the Turbo Hayabusa, but at the end of the day, it comes down to rider inputs, right? And I have one final clip with the H2 I wanna show you guys. So this next clip of the H2 is from 100 miles per hour start, fourth gear at 90% throttle, basically pinning it from 100 and just rolling on into fourth gear, almost maxing it out, uh, ending at about 150 miles per hour. Let's see how quickly that happens. And that was it, uh, 3.7 seconds to get from 100 all the way to about 150. So I really think the H2 has massive potential to be the fastest bike we've ever had here on the channel. But as it sits right now, it's just a little dicey to ride in my opinion. And I'd love to get it sorted a little bit better and so that it can actually produce the kind of times that I know it can. Um, honestly, I'd love to lower it like I did my Turbo Hayabusa. I don't know why we would keep it stock height if it's all it's gonna be is a straight line missile kind of bike. Um, I think that and getting it back to pump gas, getting a little bit more reliable with the fuel pump ought to be a great thing for that motorcycle. But as of right now, we can't really see its actualized potential. I'm super curious to get it out on the dyno, but as you can see, compared to a 900 horsepower Dodge Hellcat, these bikes are monstrously fast, monstrous. Um, I also pulled a bit of footage from a guy with a built GT500 Ford Mustang. Uh, we'll play that footage really quick. So this gentleman went from about 60 to 160 in 7.67 seconds. Uh, very impressive. Again, those are indicated speeds on the speedometer for these uh, cars and bikes, but it really puts into perspective just how crazy fast uh, the Turbo Hayabusa and the H2 really is. And again, they haven't even actualized their full potential. Uh, that Turbo Hayabusa with race gas and more boost will go even faster um, with a more brave rider than me for sure too. Uh, but uh, why don't we kick it back to the shop and we'll talk a little bit more about these bikes. So as you can tell on the street, it's kind of inconclusive as to which one really is fastest because they're both so kind of mind-bendingly fast 
that it just requires the most absolute dedication and commitment to get the most out of these machines, which truthfully, I'm just not comfortable doing on public roads. I am definitely willing to have some fun with them on public roads, but there's a bit of a limit in my opinion. About 250 horsepower on the street is kind of like, after that point, you're, you're just chasing some demon. I really don't think it's worth it, and you really need to take these bikes out to a mile event, which I'm gonna do next year to see which one actually is faster in a measurable way. But in the kind of street sense, you know, we can get close given the footage and looking at the data and all that sort of stuff. But for my money, I still like the Turbo Hayabusa a whole lot. I feel like it's raw, it's comfortable, it's animalistic. Uh, it just feels like such a cool thing to ride and own. Whereas the H2 is a lot of fun, don't get me wrong, but this feels like some kind of new designer drug that is just kind of zoinking out your brain in ways that you can't even really understand. This feels like classic 80s cocaine. This is like bath salts and molly. Um, I'm not a huge drug user, but that's what I imagine it would be like. Uh, yeah, again, this motorcycle absolutely zoinked out of its mind. Um, the H2 is something we're probably gonna look back on probably 20 years from now and be like, I, did you guys remember Kawasaki made that motorcycle? That was absolutely crazy. Um, why did they do that? <laughs> There's nothing like this thing. I've never ridden a motorcycle quite like the H2, and that's coming from a guy who owns a Turbo Hayabusa. I thought that I was gonna be ready for this machine. I was like, yeah, for sure. Like, I've got the Turbo Hayabusa, jump on an H2. It's gonna be a lot of fun. It's, it's kind of not even that fun. It's just like absolutely scary to ride pretty much all the time. The thing's trying to kill you constantly. Uh, the Turbo Hayabusa feels, it sounds ridiculous to say, but it feels gentle. Like it's gonna take care of you. Like it's, it's you know, kind of like an older kind of grandpa that's like, all right, son, you know, let's, let's carry you through this ravine. Whereas the H2 is like your zoinked out, you know, uh, bath salts consuming meth addict uncle that's trying to get you to steal catalytic converters or something like that. You know, both offer an interesting time, but you're probably gonna wanna stick with something a little bit more normal, uh, which is crazy to say in the context of these two machines. Um, but what do you guys think? Between these two motorcycles, which one do you like more? Let me know in the comments down below. I'm pretty sure the H2 probably steals everybody's hearts because, oh my God, it's an H2. It's the craziest, zaniest bike. It's the last route of the Exodia. But the old dog still got some tricks, and I have seen some Turbo Hayabusas absolutely destroying everything in their path. Again, all we need to do to that bike is get C16 race gas, pump up the boost, 400 wheel horsepower, and then it's pretty much untouchable. But as we saw in the detailed comparison for the data, both of these bikes are basically untouchable for most of anything on the road. Um, I pretty much have the sense when I'm on this thing that I'm like, I, I just wish somebody would. I wish somebody would even try. It's happened a couple times in the Turbo Hayabusa and I don't even know if they have gone or not. It's one of those things, if you're on the highway playing with somebody, on that bike, you don't even know if they went. You, you just go and uh, it's, it's kind of crazy. But that's gonna wrap up my thoughts between the Turbo Hayabusa and the H2. We're definitely gonna do more detailed comparisons between these two motorcycles, but I thought it'd be fun to look at the footage and take a deep dive look on that. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Remember, go over to shop.yemini.co and use that code HORNET to get entered for this fantastic giveaway we got going on. You're not gonna wanna miss it. Time is running out. We'll catch you in the next one. See you later. Well, look at you, you've made it to the end of another Yammy Noob video. You should consider yourself pretty lucky because I have curated this one right over here for you to continue watching. It's probably just as good as the one you just saw. Unless you hated the one you just saw. I don't know, maybe leave me a comment down below about how you much you hated it as well too. Or just keep watching this one. Make sure you keep watching Yammy Noob. Don't forget to keep watching Yammy Noob. That's the most important thing. Keep watching Yammy Noob.